speaking of Twitter, we are streaming live today on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. And uh, I mentioned before the break, Derek, that I uh, wanted to look ahead a little bit on the schedule because we're about windshields, not rear views. You got here that on the right. Score North first place Twins show. You obviously have your hands full with the New York Yankees the next three nights at Target Field. But then you things get a little bit easier for the Twins. You got the White Sox uh, for four in Chicago. Then you play the Miami Marlins, who are basically a minor league team, for three. And then, th and then this is yeah, ouch. this Catch is the number of that bus, <laughs> Derek Jeter. This is the month of August for the Minnesota Twins. You get the Royals, and then the Braves and the Indians, two good baseball teams, and the Brewers. But the good thing is, you get the Indians for four. That's a chance, I think, to put some ground between you and them. I don't look at that with dread as, oh my God. Here come the Indians, and they're going to catch us in the division. You're the better baseball team. That's a chance to put some distance between yourselves and the second-place team. Then you got the Rangers, who are hovering right around 500. White Sox again. Tigers, White Sox, Tigers. That's that's the month of August. It, that looks a lot like what the, uh, the Indians have had on their schedule for the last month and a half. Uh, you finish up that Tigers series in September. Then it's the Red Sox and another one with the Indians. Then it's sub-500 teams for the rest of the season. Hmm. Other than one more series with the Indians, you have the Nationals, the White Sox, the Royals, the Tigers, and the Royals. So go undefeated in that stretch is what you're saying. I mean, you should be able to win, on average, two out of every three games. Right? I mean, yeah. When you, when you look at that stretch of schedule in the month of September. 675 baseball club, yeah, you should win two out of every three. I, I got to be honest. I didn't hear a lot of what you just said because I'm one series at a time. Oh, jeez. So there's like a lot of noise going on, but sounded like good noise and positive stuff. And I appreciate what you're saying. I have to, I have to excuse myself from the look ahead conversation mm -hmm. because that's not the brand. The brand is <laughs> one series at a time. You got the Bronx Bombers coming to town and you've got, as you said, Rami, you got your hands full. So take care of business, then worry about what comes next on the schedule. But I saw a tweet this weekend that might apply to this conversation. Might? If I, if I can bring it. Yeah. Okay might possibly for a limited time apply to this conversation. <laughs> uh, Kyle Glazer, I hope I'm saying that right, of Baseball America had a tweet that I thought was just fascinating. Because it, it, like intuitively, I got this, but he put it into words and numbers perfectly. There are a bunch of teams that are just, uh, as they say, muy en fuego right now around Major League Baseball. They're very hot. San Francisco Giants, Oakland A's, Washington Nationals, Cleveland Indians, and New York Yankees, and I'll read their streaks in a second, but... I saw that tweet from Kyle Glazer, Baseball America, credit where it's due, and I thought, oh, boy, every one of those is bad for the Twins for one reason or another. And I'll just quickly, I mean, they're like, the Giants are 15 of their last 19. Uh, the A's now 21 of 28. The Yankees are 23 of their last 30 games have been Ws for the Yankees. That's, I mean, it's just astounding runs for those teams, and but they're doing what the Twins were doing earlier right. in the season. That's fair. That's so fair if, to say. If, if the Yankees have a rough August and September, but remain atop the AL East, there, there we you go. go. Yeah, but they got all those wins in the middle of the season. There you go. That's that true. That doesn't count. But my point here is that, like, all of those hot streaks coming at a bad time for the Twins. Of course, you got the trade deadline coming up next week. We're going we're gonna to blow the doors off the trade deadline here at Score North. They're going to be just... Tons of Score North Twin Show programming live for the MLB trade deadline. Uh, plenty more on that to come, but I just wanted to give a quick heads up to the Score North Twin Show listeners that look out for that. But man, the timing of this is bad because, okay, I mentioned the Giants. Are the Giants still going to sell Mad Bum and their bullpen options? Maybe, maybe not. The Oakland A's, obviously that was bad because you just had like a you know, just drag it down into the mud wrestling scrap for four games with Oakland. It came out with a split. I think you should probably be happy with the split, uh, given how good that team's playing right now. The Nationals, well, they've done it pretty much for the last month, and that's only bad because, okay, anyone who was allowing themselves to dream about the pipe dream of adding a guy like bruised eye bruised nose max scherzer to start game one of the alds <laughs> like that has been put to bed sean doolittle ain't getting moved at the trade deadline cleveland i don't need to spend any words or breath talking about why that's potentially bad for the twins and the yankees coming to town tonight winning 23 of their past 30 games 
it's who you play and who you play them, and you're catching the Yankees at a really hot point. And when you play, right? The boogeyman is coming. That's true. That's pretty good. That caught me by surprise when you went to break with that, man. That's, that's pretty good. good. Oh, you, you set me up on a tee for that one. The first <laughs> back last segment when you mentioned Boogeyman, there I said go. I got to get that. It was from like Halloween. it was as if is that what it's from? Rami Macklaw. First Halloween movie. Yeah. It's like Rami got a soft toss softball hey, that he could just you know clobber what? over the. Oh, wait a second. The the little Probably local kids, example. the little local kids in town making fun of uh, Tommy Kramer saying the Boogeyman is coming. <laughs> that's what, that's what that's from. Yeah, that's the Yankees, man. Yeah. But it's a bad time for the Twins to be getting them. Obviously, they're good, and now they're healthy, and they've won 23 of 30. I, I think there's some positive to be taken. You get two lefties this series. You're also good. But you look at recent track record, and you got to say the Yankees are favorite in this series. I didn't get the soft tosses that you're talking about here, all right? I just have to say, like, I could have gotten some better pitches you know what? on Saturday at Target. Yeah. I saw – okay, so uh -huh. you did the TC Bear Home Run Derby on yes. Saturday, Saturday home games, mm -hmm. and Rami was one of the mm -hmm. celebrity guests, right. I guess. Um, I no, guess. I didn't, mean I guess? No, I didn't put celebrity in air quotes. <laughs> You're just baseless <laughs> accusations. <laughs> but Rami talked a big game, came away with zero. The Bear won the Derby. The Bear always wins the Derby. And for now, there was a video. The or, Bear always wins the Derby for now. Did I see a video. I saw a video and photos, still photos of that yes. event. Yes. And can I just say, I thought it was very kind of the twins and anyone involved in that event to keep the L screen up in front of the batting practice picture while you were up. Like, just. I, for, made for really, the pride. I made some really good contact. For right? the oh, your exit velocity was some, good? There was some good exit velocity. Oh, your hard hit the, average? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, yes, Derek Wetmore. Well, the next time we have a hard hit average, I'll be sure to call you. The next time I face TC the Bear, he's going down, all right? Because okay. I, I have not swung a bat in over a year. Pretty big game. It's been over a year since I've swung a bat of any kind, and that was the first time ever, I think, that I've hit a softball, to my recollection. I don't remember ever playing softball before in my life. Maybe gym class. Talking a pretty back big in high school game for a to, goose egg. To do what I did, I thought was was okay. And <laughs> I I was figuring it out as I went along. And then I mm -hmm. watched the bear swing. Mm -hmm. And I picked up some things oh, okay. that I think are going to have me better nice. prepared for next time. That bear is going down next time. Uh, I think the bear is quaking in his oversized, comically large boots. Really nice guy, by the way. Yeah. TC the bear. Agreed. Good dude. And um, thanks to everybody with the Twins who let me participate in that. Because that, honestly, regardless of the outcome, it was a thrill. Like, how many people get to go out on a Major League Baseball field? Just that alone. I know, Derek, you cover the team that's, like, ho-hum every day to you. You get to step on no, a Major man. League Baseball it's field. It's so cool. I don't do it that often. And to be able to go out into the field, like, when you're covering the game, for those of you who don't know, you don't – you do not step on the grass. Do not step on that grass. You're allowed to, like, stay on the warning track by the dugout. You don't go out onto the field. Yeah, like, I'm not going to put a dollar value on human lives, right. but it's – it's there's a value. Do not step on the grass. To be able to go out into center field, get my name announced on the PA system, get, on, get on the scoreboard – and do the home run derby. Whatever happened as far as the outcome, I was going to be really, really happy. As somebody has, who has done it twice, Rami, in the last couple Good of times. years, it's, it's, it is a thrill. I it will was, say it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Man, Thank you, you got more twins. than zero, though. No, I never hit a home run. You haven't? No. How come you get invited it, back? I did it twice. I did it with me and Dave Harrigan did it yeah. in 2017. And I was there for that one. And then me and Reavers did it last year. I, I thought you got and one. No. I didn't swing and miss at all, <clears throat> Rami. <laughs> The first two, um, the first two I swung and missed. I, I made contact every time I swung. Oh but no! I swung Robbie. and missed because I was, but. I was, I would, I had no to start. I was like, just swing at everything, dude. <laughs> oh, and I swung at some bad pitches. You should have talked to Manny. And then I started being a little bit you more selective. Me... Here's what I was doing wrong. Man, I got to let the ball get a little bit deeper into the strike zone. I was trying to jump on swing it, plane, man. And get out in front of it, swing right? Plane, swing bat plane, path. It's all important. Exactly. You want to get it at the right point in the bad path. Let it get to you. Don't try and jump on it and and hit it out. I think I I think I got it. I think I got it. And next time the bear is in trouble. It's just <laughs> such a big game for a goose egg. But you, you're talking a lot. This is like, my first time. Show, don't tell. First time. Show me. That was my first time. I don't look at more than one series at a time on the baseball <laughs> schedule, but I do have Cleveland's. <laughs> Schedule pulled up to appease the crowd. Okay. I mean, I, I know you'll care about this, Rami. Manny, I got an inkling you'll care about this. I, I Personally, hey, I'm focused on the Yankees and Twins. That's just me. But the Cleveland Indians schedule is weird. 
And I don't know if we've talked about this enough. And that they play the Royals and the Tigers every day? Yeah. I th- hundred. Last time I checked, 162 games against bottom-dwelling <laughs> AL Central teams. That's what it seems like. That is all they have on their <laughs> That's schedule. That's what it seems like. And if they need a few more to get a couple extra wins, I, I'm sure they could call the Royals and work something out. Mm-hmm. They have a weak schedule going into the trade deadline at a time when they have to decide, are we buyers or sellers or stand patters? And it sure doesn't look like they're going to be sellers based on how they've played over the last calendar month. But everything I'm hearing is even if they're not sellers, Trevor Bauer may still be on the block, that they could do the buy and sell thing. As a matter of fact, I saw Jeff Passan this morning on SportsCenter saying they could sell Trevor Bauer and buy a pitcher from somebody else. Oh, well, call me Uh (laughs) because Trevor Bauer would look great in a Twins uniform. Their schedule going into the trade deadline is three at Toronto, who could be without Marcus Stroman any minute now. Right. And and Ken Giles, who knows, whatever. I have some news on that. Well, speculation about that. Is it standard speculation? It's pretty reckless. Okay. Reckless speculation. Three with the Blue Jays for Cleveland and then four with Kansas City. So just fuel to your fire, confirmation of your opinion that they just get bottom dwellers (laughs) on the schedule. It's really nice of the MLB schedule makers to put that together (laughs) for the Cleveland Indians. But. Then it's two with the Astros and trade deadline day. In fact, you'll only have one of those games with the Astros before the, I think it's three o'clock central, if I'm not mistaken, trade deadline. Um, and then this is where it gets kind of funny, actually, because July, cupcake, cupcake, cupcake. You're shopping at a discount bakery in the month of July, pad the win total. That's great. You don't have to give any of them back. But then after you've made your decision and done the deed at the trade deadline, figured out what your team is going to be the rest of the way. So you got Houston, Houston, Angels, Angels, Angels. Say what you want about the Angels, but like there's some talent on that roster. Texas, a current contender. Then four with the Twins, contender. Three with the Red Sox. They're the Red Sox. And then four with the Yankees. That's the first half of August for these guys. So... I guess my thinking would be if you want to win the division, obviously you have to add because that is a hellacious stretch of series for Cleveland. Um, They can get healthier. They are a good club. Strong, strong candidate to win a wild card. I just look at the division race and I say where their schedule was easy in July, it gets hard in Mm -hmm. August. All right. One series at a time, but that's what the next month looks like. I think it looks good. I'm, I'm willing to look ahead more than one series at a time. I got the binocular. Okay. I'm not just looking out the windshield. I got binoculars and I'm looking out the windshield. That's what Gosh, I'm doing here. You've got like a telescope and you're looking I got the here. brakes <laughs> cut. I'm driving with binoculars. Out. Like none of this is safe, but we're going to get there, people. <laughs> we're going to get there. We're going to get to October. Beyond that, I can't guarantee anything. Who's starting game one of the American but League Division this, Series in 2022? I want to This wanna bus know. gets to October before it runs out of gas or crashes or anything terrible happens. Man. By the way, how are you going to boo me after the first swing? Somebody booed me after the first That's swing. Bad. In the, That's in bad. In a home run, in a in a softball home run derby. Gun. I kind of get, like, it's mean when you boo or when you when you applaud that Trevor May is getting taken out of the game, but I kind of get that. How do you boo somebody? What's Rami ever done? In a pregame softball home run derby against a mascot. That's just not cool. Probably the roof thing. I see some of you have lined up on the 